Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be looking at another section of QR. So this is just going to be more of an introductory video and perhaps I'll release some harder speed distance time questions later on. But this first one is just going to be looking at some of the basics and some of the things that I think you ought to know. So first of all, um, I guess just starting off with it. The main idea that you have to understand here is this formula. So speed is distance over time. And just one thing that I want to say just really quickly, speed you know, acceleration, all of these other different things, they are all simply just rates, right? So they come under the term rates, okay? So because all a rate is, is a change in quality, is a change in a quantity over time, okay? So w whatever it is. And so, for example, speed is the rate of change of distance. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, and so on and so on and so on. So all of them have time as the denominator. So the easy way to remember that is if something is a rate of change with respect to time, time must always be on the bottom. So you're always dividing by time. So speed will be something divided by time. Acceleration will be something divided by time. Velocity will be something divided by time. Okay. Um, and the, so that's obviously the first thing, understanding the formula. But most of you guys will know the formula. One thing that sometimes crops up that students get caught out by is, I would say, um, speed distance time graphs. So the important thing to understand the speed distance time graph is, so for example, it might say, so when you're starting off, speed's going to be zero. Then speed remains constant, might increase again, and then go straight back down to zero, whatever it is. There's a couple of important things to understand. So, remember, in a graph, using our original equation here, we can calculate distance. And we can calculate distance by doing speed multiplied by time, which equals distance. So that's just a simple rearrangement. Okay, so speed times time is distance. Well, distance is also represented on this graph because it's the area under the curve. So you can see what happens is if I divide this into kind of certain sections, all I have to do to find out the area of each one is just multiply the speed of this, so this segment, by the time of this segment, for example, right? And then just keep doing it for these kind of different areas as such, and so on and so on and so on, okay? So you can see in both ways how this is related. And I think often students don't realize that this is the way to do it. So um, and I've seen an odd question set also on Medify where distance is, um, well, they ask you to calculate distance, and this is the way to do it. The next thing that's really important on speed distance time is being comfortable switching between different units. So the common one is minutes and hours, okay? Like, I know you guys know that to go from 45 minutes into hours, you divide by 60, right? Sorry, divide by 60, which is 0.75. But it's important to be able to do this as fast as possible. So I would, I would say it's really, really important to learn the common subdivisions of an hour. So what that basically means is I would say that it's vital that you guys should know all of these changes in terms of what they are per hour. So these are the ones I would recommend. So I'd recommend you to learn like 6, 10, 12, 15, 20, 30. And then any others from there are kind of going to be multiples of it. So 6 minutes is 0 0.1 of an hour. 10 minutes of an hour is going to be 0 0.166 because it's a sixth. 12 over 60 is 0 0.2. 15 is 0 0.25. 20 is 0.33, and then 30 is 0.5. But if you learn these, the others become even easier, actually, because, for example, 5 minutes is going to be half of 10, so it's 0.833, okay? 3 minutes is half of this, so it becomes 0.05, okay? Uh, and so on and so on and so on. So you, you can see how you don't necessarily have to learn everything. So 7 minutes then becomes 0.125. So I think these are probably the core ones to learn. Obviously, like, you'll know 45 minutes is 0.75, etc., etc. But once you learn these, I think the other ones become way, way easier to do, okay? So... That's what I mean about like being comfortable doing switching. So, for example, if you see set, if you see sixty six minutes, you know that's one point one hours. Instead of having to pull up your calculator, do sixty six divided by sixty, and then it gives you one point one. Okay, it's just getting there one step faster. It's just being able to do that maths. And here, so although this is technically mental maths, this is something that you can just sit there and just outright learn. And I think it will benefit you, um, in the long term. Okay. Um, so yeah, so learn the common subdivisions of the hour as well, I would say. So the other thing that's um, also crucial, obviously you've got to um, learn to go back the other way as well. So I know that's easier to go from hours back to minutes, it's just timesing by 60. Okay, so converting between units, once again, another little thing to learn. So it's really, really important that you're able to understand where we get units from and how we play around with them. Okay, so one of the things that I guess that is sometimes asked in questions, for example, is converting between kilometers per hour to meters per second and many students often don't know what the conversion is okay or they don't know how to do it but it's very very easy to do so all you have to do is take it step by step so let's go from kilometers per hour to meters per hour so 
1,000 meters in a kilometer. Let's go from meters per hour to meters per minute, for example. Well, there's 60 minutes in an hour. And then finally, let's go from meters per minute to meters per second. So there's another 60 seconds in a minute. So you have to do time. There's already a time 60 in the denominator, so times 60 again. So times 3,600. So then therefore that's going to equal, the overall conversion is going to be times 10 over 36. Okay, I know I'm working backwards here. And then 10 over 36 becomes 5 over 18. So times 5 over 18 meters per second. So therefore you can see that to go from kilometers per hour to meters per second, all you have to do is multiply by 5 18. And this is actually one of the very few things that you actually, I would say, is good to learn in the UCAT. Okay, so I know a lot of the UCAT and math stuff, you know, there's not really a lot to learn. You know, they're not asking you to differentiate, integrate, or anything like this. But this is one of the very few things I would say that you probably should learn. Because I've seen questions where the whole idea of the question is to make you do all of this. And you can see how you can save time just by knowing it. So 5 18. And then the other way as well, therefore, becomes 18 over 5. So if you're doing it the other way, it becomes um, 18 over 5. OK, so if you're going to go from meters per second into um, into um, what's the word? You go from meters per second into kilometers per hour. OK, hope that makes sense. So let's get into the questions, then, because I think with the questions, this is where we're going to be able to um, kind of uh, kind of really showcase our ideas. here. So just run some out in four hours and 15. So as soon as I see this question, 4.25 is what I'm thinking. OK, um, because normally speeds are given in miles per hour, kilometers per hour, you know, no one really does speeds per minute. Right. It's very rare. Obviously, there could be questions like that. So it says Jess is training to run a marathon, 26.2 miles. She tracks her progress in sports hub. Perhaps tells her that the average speed is five miles per hour. What is the increase in her average speed? OK, so importantly, um, the first thing that's really important to do. Um, so first of all, I guess if you guys want to pause, see if you can do this question. First of all. We're told what our average speed is already, so we just have to work it out for this. So remember, speed is distance divided by time. Remember what I said, time's always on the bottom um, because it's speed is a, a rate of change of something. Um, so all it is is 26.2 divided by 4.25. So 26.2 divided by 4.25. Slap this into my calculator. 6.16 miles per hour. Subtract the 5 miles per hour to find out the increase. It becomes 1.16 miles per hour. So what is the increase in our average speed? 1.16 miles per hour. Perfect. Okay. Not too difficult. Once again, just a nice introductory question. Okay. So on to the... Okay. So next question. How long will it take to get from Ambleside to Manchester, traveling by car at an average speed of 65 miles per hour? So Ambleside to Manchester. So Ambleside to Manchester is 88 miles. Okay. So remember, speed is distance over time. So all it's going to be is 88 divided by 65. 88 divided by 65, okay, so that gives you 1.35 hours. Let's put it into the calculator. And to get into minutes, times by 60. I know it doesn't really say what they want it in minutes or whatever, but um, I'm just showing you that that's how you would do it, okay? So a couple of these questions I just kind of like um, just picked out um, of some questions that I saw in Medify, for example. But that's that's all it is, not too difficult. But remember, they look more challenging than what it is, but you just got to have this in your mind at all times. That's all it is, okay? On to the next question. So what's your average walking speed if it takes two hours, if it takes you two hours and 20 minutes to walk from Windermere to Grasmere? So Windermere to Grasmere, seven miles, 2020, once again, alarm bells, 2.33, seven divided by 2.33, okay? Seven divided by 2.33 is pretty much dead on three miles per hour, okay? So um, because 2.33 is seven over three, so three miles per hour. And for example, if you wanted to get into kilometers per hour, um, then you just have to multiply by 1.6 because miles to kilometers is 1.6. So that will be 4.8 kilometers per hour. OK, perfect. And then the last question, the ferry from Ambleside to Windermere travels at 14 miles per hour. What is the distance of the journey? So ferry from Ambleside to Windermere. So what time does the 11.30 ferry arrive? It arrives at 12. So it travels for half an hour. So it's, remember, speed is distance over time. So speed times time is distance. You can do this one in your head. So therefore, it's just going to be 14 miles per hour times 0 0.5, which is 7 miles. Okay. 
So, um, yeah, not too difficult. So I know these questions were a little bit easier, um, but just some introductory ideas here, maybe some things that you might find useful. Um, just thought I would go over the basics since a lot of people have been requesting videos like this. So if you did find this video helpful, um, thank you so much for watching and thank you for all of the support. Um, the numbers we're hitting is truly, truly crazy and none of this would have been possible without you guys. And I will do my best to keep releasing videos, but just tell me what you guys want me to do exactly. And in fact, it'll be even better if you guys could even give me questions. So I think one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to have a document in the um, comments, in the uh, description of this video, just a Google Doc. And if you guys can put video uh, put questions on there, I'll, I'll be more than happy to go through them um, in perhaps in like a live stream or something at some point. Um, but yeah, we'll go from there. Okay, great. Awesome. Thank you very much. I'll see you guys in the next video.